Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I'm gonna talk about playing with some dogs and dog play and trying to build up your dog's engagement with you with using them play. Something that I think a lot of us say we do with our dogs, but it's, are you actually playing with your dog the way that your dog wants to be played with? It's something that I think a lot of us should really just take, take like a thousand million steps back and figure out what does my dog want to do? And once you figure out what your dog wants to do, then you're really gonna to start to build that relationship to be able to get your dog to understand who you are, what you're all about. And at the same time, that play that that dog is desiring is that play that is his instinctual drive. And that instinctual drive, when you're using that in your play, that's how you're gonna be able to get your dog to actually be able to become a calm dog because you're actually gonna be able to satisfy that dog's needs. The dog has absolute, they, they, they have energy. They are just excessive energy. You know, everybody remembers that kid in school that's just, that just couldn't, or it was you, it was me, that's just sitting there, just teacher trying to tell you to do something. And you're, like, you're, just, you're on the move. That's how pretty much every dog I see is. They're just, they, they are just jam-packed with energy. And if we don't allow them to be able to express that energy, let that out, and be able to just be themselves, you're gonna run into a very, very high level of chaos. And that high level of chaos is gonna be something that's gonna be very, very, very destructive for you. So today I not only wanna talk about some play, but I wanna show a little bit of play. And, and uh, a specific dog like this is a, a very interesting dog that he loves to, he, he, he works some animals. And I bought me something new today to just be able to show, because I don't need to bring toys and items to my dogs to play with them because I have the, the, nat, the realness out here. I've got chickens, I've got a donkey, I've got cows, I've got everything for them to be able to, to, to get that energy out that they have. But there's some toys that I, that I just got and I bought this one specific set up here to be able to just show you a little bit of something that I, I know a lot of people out here are talking about flirt poles and RC cars and talking about uh, 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 what are those things called? Those bouncy those spring poles. Those are really cool too. And hooking up all this stuff to all these things. But sometimes when, when we hear that, when you know about that, you're just like, I know exactly what you're talking about. But if you've never heard about it, you've never seen it, you don't even know where to start, it might put you in a very, very high level of confusion. Like what exactly is going down? And what exactly should I do with playing in, in, with my dog to get him to do what I want? So something I just want to show is a quick little, what I would do with my dog if I were, didn't have chickens around, if I didn't have cows around, if I didn't have anything. And it's very fascinating because this animal has never played with any sort of, <laughs> he's already ready, he knows what the deal is. And it's just, a, this is why the dogs love us because it's a game that we play together. The, the game is, is, the proper word may not be what I'm about to say, is dead because it's not moving. But as soon as I get it to start moving, that's when the game starts to become real amazing. That's why for me, especially with this specific dog, we get to have a lot of fun because the work that we do is always together. We're, we're doing everything together with what it is that we have to get going. And, I, and I'm doing what his instinctual drive is to do. And I'm working at together. I'm, I'm guiding him. I'm coaching him. And that's where our relationship is just going to be that, that, that one that's just, hey, uh, Johnny, get down. That one that is just going to be very, very strong. So here I picked up what I'm going to call, I, I like these. I've been recommending these. This is a, uh, uh, they're considered horse whips. It's a horse whip. And it's a six foot one with a six foot extra sec section on it. So it's like 12 feet in, in total. But then I just put myself a little fake little uh, uh, squirrel thing at the end of it. Put a fake little squirrel thing and it even squeaks. Uh, uh, if you've never been on a farm work, that's a scary sound right there. But uh, they put them on all the toys to make it seem like they're, they're more engaging to the dogs. But this is something that just gets this dog, it gets him, it, it'll get him going. Now I'll get going here in a second. But the biggest thing is, a lot of times we get out here and we try to do too much, too fast, too soon. Go slow, go slow. So something like this with him, I would just move it a little bit. I would just move a little, a little, a little. Cause a lot of dogs quit the games we play because we don't ever let them win. We're just like, ah, especially when you're playing tug with dogs. It's let the dog have the toy. It's the dog's toy to play with. It's not for you. It's the engagement that you want. Let them win this game 100% of the time. So the biggest thing is go slow. Go slow. Just, just move, move something around a little bit. Move something around. Move it around. Move it around a little bit slow. A little bit slow. Let him get it. Let him have it. He's super excited. He's like, hey, I get to chew on that and I get to actually get on this. But he gets to chew on my chicken sometimes because it's a must need. It helps me be able to pick him up easier. So he understands this game of knowing that he, he, he could chew on it a little bit and I want him to chew on it. But at the same time, the biggest thing that I really like about a lot of these collies and a lot of these shepherds, they're not, they're not into just thrash and, and hold on. They just, they just want to nibble and go, nibble and go. So we use that instinct to just let them go. Let them, let them do what they got to do. 
So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and get him get super, super animated, but I can get going real fast with this thing. Real fast with him. I mean, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get moving. And it doesn't take much effort for me. This is, this is something for, for, for a, uh, what I'm gonna say is this goes into dog lovers. Not a lot of people I know to play with your dogs. But if you start playing with your dogs, you start giving your dog something to do, you're really gonna start to notice that things get much, much better with your dog. Like, you, it, it's not even a couple of days. Uh, Oral down. And here, I give him a, a, little, a little stay command. This is something you, you build up to, but we've been doing this for years in reality, playing with real animals. So to do this with a fake animal is pretty simple to do. But then you just give him another command. Walk up, walk up, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. And for him, it's get a hold of it. And this dude will just really get into going. And then you just slow it down a second, because this being so long, he, 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 he's, he's going he, he, he's gonna to struggle to get it, because I could whip it pretty dang fast. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it. Down, down down okay uh johnny that's not an okay for you you go back over there you i need some space homie johnny get down <laughs> these dogs are so much fun <laughs> but it's something that is just very entertaining when you watch a dog do what they do to, to the point of being able to just have that fun and each dog is very, very different. Some dogs love to play tug. Some dogs love to, 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 to the one that I really like is to, to put the spring with a tug above, to have them jump up, to grab it, to hold it. And then they just, those are the dogs that do the shaking thing. When they do that shaking on that toy, that's a, that's a toy for them to do. But for the dogs that just love to sprint and go, I mean, he's just, he's like, when is it gonna move again? He, he wants that engagement, he wants to go. This is something that is a game that is just set up just, just for us together to be able to build a relationship, for me to learn more about him. And, and the best way to be able to train certain commands. If I wanna train a perfect, perfect down, when I say down is down, I like to do it with this because the dogs automatically have their points of hesitation when they're chasing it and when they're moving and they're doing what they're doing. It'll go out wide and then you'll watch them go out wide and then they always have this hesitation. When they have that hesitation, you give them a command. You tell them down, you tell them stay, you tell them stand, you tell them sit, you tell them something. I don't like sit, sit's foreign. But, uh, I tell them all these commands in the middle of it. And then when you see they get really, really anxious, you tell them, okay, okay, go ahead, you go ahead, you go walk a little bit towards it. And then uh, just keep going and going and going. And then you really just start to train very, very nice, easy commands into the dog using their instinct and not some foreign way of trying to use a treat and tell them down, use a treat, tell them down. They're just, they're just not gonna understand that. I mean, they will, but they're not gonna understand it in a way that they learn, that they know what to do. We all have this, we all, as human beings, learn di different ways. We all don't learn the exact same way. And yet we as human beings love to train animals as if they are a human being, and they are not. And I don't know if anyone's ever figured that out or not, but dogs, especially, are just not human beings. They have human-like characteristics and qualities to them, but they do not learn, they do not function, they do not interact, they do not do anything like us as human beings. But yet we come at them and train them as if they are humans. And that's where things start to come into conflict, because dogs are looking at you like, what the heck do you want? And to you, it's like, it's so easy, just do this, it's so easy, this is all I'm looking for. And the dog is just like, what the heck is going on here? And that's where the frustration comes, because to you, in your brain, it's easy. But to the dog, it's a, the most absolute complex thing possible. But yet, when you bring that dog into its instinctual way of being, now it's easy to the dog. It's like, oh, you want me to down? That's down. That, that's simple. I can do that. Oh, you want me to stay here? Okay, I can, I can do that. Oh, you want me to wait? Oh, okay, I can, I can do that. That's no problem. Everything is easy at that moment for the dog, because the dog sees it as what it's, its livelihood, its life, its way of being. And it's something that is, is I'm going to say, not so easy for us as humans because we are learning a whole new language here. So for us, it's gonna take a little bit. For us to be able to just pick up a simple whip like that and be able to flip it around and be able to get them to chase a toy, it's gonna to be weird at first. The dog's gonna catch it every second because you're gonna be like, oh man, how'd he get it so fast? Because these dogs are fast. That's why I suggest getting one with about, I like this one because the, the, the handle itself is springy. 
and they got them at the tractor supply, you get them at any, any, anywhere they sell horse equipment. It, it's, it's springy, it's not, it's not rigid, so you can get a chance to move it around more. And I like it to be a little bit longer so that I can have a chance to make it a little bit easier. You got a little short one, and your dog's gonna get it like every instant. And, and it, it, it could be fun, but it's a little more exciting when you have a little bit more space. And I'm not talking about you need 14 acres of land out here like I have. I've got enough little area right here to get this dog to the point that he's like, okay, we're, we're good, everything is fine, I, I, I'm good right now. And then I could do that multiple times a day with me having extremely, extremely low minimal effort. I'm not going for no 15 mile run, which I do do that with one of my dogs, but I'm, I'm not going for no runs with them. I'm not, I'm not having to do any of that that's taking me two, three, four, to five hours every single day to keep up with. It's not what the dogs are looking for. The dogs are just looking to get tired. And in reality, the fastest, most impactful way to be able to get them there, the better off you're gonna be. The, the, the bleeding not making it take longer, longer, longer is, is in reality just gonna irritate the dog because they, they wanna figure out how to get all that energy out so they can just lay down and just relax and just be able to chill. And that's, that's something that is amazing about using a simple, you call it a flirt pole, so call it a simple horse whip and put a simple toy at the end of it and just have your dog simply chase it around. It gets your dog engaged in such a way that is just so, so fun to them. I mean, this boy is so engaged that every time I keep bringing this thing out, this is the third time now I brought this thing out, he sees this fake little item and he's like, well, when are we gonna get that? As opposed to there being hundreds of chickens around here, he, he is still gonna get him some chickens when we're out walking doing what we're doing. But he is so engaged with this because he knows it's more under my control and it's more of just me and him that are doing it together. There's something that is just very, very powerful about that, that your dog is just gonna look at you and just say, wow, you are the one that knows how to be able to fulfill my needs. Not anything else out here. And that's something that is where I'm gonna say about the whole start and slow and steady, because a lot of times the language that we communicate to our dogs is to don't chase, don't do that, get away from that. Don't think about taking off after that squirrel. Don't even think about looking for no bunnies. Don't even think about that. So when we finally bring something out, the dog is gonna be hesitant like, is this okay? Is that all right? So go slow to be able to show the dog that, hey, in those scenarios, yeah, I really don't want you chasing anything. But in this scenario, you can run until you, you damn near get your leg blown out of socket. Like you can run, you can get it, you can do what you gotta do right now. Now it's okay, now you can be able to fulfill that. So that your dog can be able to just start to build that trust with you and realizing that, hey, I have this desire and thank you for being able to fulfill that desire for me. It's simple. The, you're not gonna be out here for no five hours doing this. Like I, I would be I'm impressed if this dog didn't have a heart attack by the time after about 10 minutes straight of out here running doing this. He, he would just, he would be done. Cause I see him when he's chasing the chickens, he gets a break. Cause the chicken will, will take a break. Like, hey, this, I'm getting kind of tired. The cows always take a break. They run, 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 run. And then he'll finally get to the point that they're just like, okay, we're, we quit, we'll go back. They always quit, but this, this can go as long as I'm ready, willing and ready to go. And that can go for a very, very long time because it's such minimal effort for me. I could literally stand in one place and just throw the thing around me and I could get him running a, a huge little circle around me the size of majority of everyone's front yard, majority of everyone's backyard. And if you don't have that, then go to an open field somewhere and, and Trust your dog a little bit. When you're engaged with this, your dog is engaged. He's not gonna worry about what's going on out there. He's gonna be engaged with you. Your dog's gonna be looking directly at you for that guidance and for that next information. And that's what you wanna get. That's what you wanna build. Because when you're able to have that dog do that chase and have that, have that, 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 that power behind them to be able to go and being able to get it, they have, they're not gonna have so much of a desire to look anywhere else. They're gonna look directly at you because you're the one that's giving them that. And that's something that I'm telling you is relationship building beyond. Trying to get a dog to do sit stays and down stays and heel stays and or heel, I don't do heel stays, but heel walks and, and all this stuff. It's so foreign to dogs. That's not gonna build your relationship to be good with them. It's gonna make them look at you like, yeah, I have to do this or else. And that's what mo majority of all that stuff comes down to. I, I, I don't like it when my dogs look at me with the or else type attitude. I want them to just do it just because. And if I'm asking for some extra, maybe I'm asking too much. Maybe I'm being too ruthless. Maybe I'm trying to force you to be about something too much that maybe I should just let some things go. That's, that's the way that I look at it. I don't want it to be a, if you don't this, then, then I'm gonna come and get you. You know, there's some circumstances that we absolutely have to do that. Yes, if you're running away and going into getting into something that I don't want need you to get into, like I'm gonna have to put some pressure upon you to say, hey, you can't do that because you could put yourself into danger. But as far as getting them to, to understand that who I am and what I bring to this world and what my value is to the dog, the dog shouldn't be confused at all about realizing that this is fun time play. We're going we're gonna to have a really good time. And then this is other time. It's like, okay, we're done. Now, now we're going to go off and do something different. 
it, it should be very, very clear. And, and it should be very clear to the dog of if, if your dog is, is go, 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 and it's not wanting to stop, you haven't worked it hard enough yet. And I would want you to work your dog to the point that they're, they're stumbling in reality. They're kind of like running and, and rolling and can't even keep up with themselves anymore. So that, that, get them to that point so that they know that you are capable of being able to push their limits all the way to, to absolute nothingness. And once you're able to do that once, the dog is gonna give you a whole different level of respect the next time and the next day and the next moment that it's with you. I just watched this happen over and over and over. I'm able to get dogs tired on leash by just making them stand and hang out with me, and, and I can get them extremely tired with making them chase stuff and being able to do things like this. And, and both ways, when you get them to that point that they are just, they are done, they are tired, they look at you with an extreme level of respect. They're no longer so pushy. They're no longer so just, just, just all, all on you and trying to whine in your face all the time. They're no longer doing that. They're just, they're just so chill. They're just so mellow. And they really calm down. And the first day, and if you've never done this, you got an older dog, it's going to take you a little while to, to get that dog to get tired because he's been building up, building up, and doing what he's doing. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, once you are able to get that dog to finally just be able to, to just get all that energy out, and just lay there. And especially if you're not, not, not at the house and you had to drive somewhere to get your dog somewhere to do something and you put them in that car and they just slay down and fall asleep right away. That is where I'm gonna say you wanna be able to get your dog to at least once a week. But more times, two or three or four times, some dogs, they're not capable of, of like hard work like that every day. And that's another thing to pay attention to. If your dog's not a, a hardcore athlete, don't think you're going to go out there for no 15-mile walk every single day. Your dog's going to run into the point that it's going to start giving you attitude. That's how this big Johnny man back here is, that if you try to go take him for walks every single day, he, he starts to he, he look at you like, dude, I thought we were cool. Like, why don't you just let me lay down and relax? Because you, you end up working them too hard, too, too much. But there's other dogs that they, they love that and they thrive off of that. And there's just no way that you're going to be able to give them the right exercise by just taking them outside and taking them for a walk around the block for a half mile or taking them for a, a, a mile around a, a little loop and never allowing them to smell anything and just, just having them pull you along the whole, way, <coughs> the whole way and you dragging them along the whole way. You're, you're never going to satisfy that dog. And that's the one thing that I just see in every dog's face when I see it. When I see that anxious, when I see that too excitable, when I see that paranoid, when I see that destructive looking face on that dog, it's saying, I got energy and I need you to let it out. And then when I look at that dog and I'm like, I got you. He, he don't trust me at first, but then after a couple of minutes and a couple of play, and we're going at it a little bit, he's like, you, you, you can give me what I need. And then I'm, I'm cool with that dog pretty much 100% of that time because that dog is just begging. It's begging for direction. And it's begging for us to be able to, to get out what's inside of them. And they're, they're yelling and screaming it every day. They're digging like crazy. They're biting up stuff like crazy. They're barking at everything like crazy. They're hounding you like crazy. They're doing all of this to communicate. I've got energy, please get it out of me. The dog just can't do it on their own. You can't just open the back door up and let them run circles around the backyard thinking that's gonna, that's gonna do anything for them. It's not, it's not. And that's something that, you know, I, I work with quite a few people. And there's some people that I'm just going to say is, is I don't know how to say it other than not everyone should have dogs because a lot of us think that just having a dog should just be a set it and forget it and just let it sleep on the couch and never have to do anything with it ever again. That is not the reality of pretty much any, I don't care how lazy your dog is. I don't care how laid back your dog is. I don't care how just, just even broke down your dog is. Your dog has needs that it absolutely has to have fulfilled or it's going to go absolutely crazy. And for us, for me, you know, I go deep with what I do with my dogs. I've got a lot. I created an entire uh, uh, oasis for them to be able to do what they do. I get a dog specific for what I see I have a problem for, and I, and I get that dog to be able to fulfill that need. I go a little deep with, with some dogs. I can work dogs all day long. I don't know what it is. And, and, and I would never expect everyone to be able to be on that same level of what it is that I do with some dogs. But there needs to be a basic understanding of if you don't have 15 to 20 minutes every single day to just dedicate to, I'm just working with you. We're the ones that are together. The rest of the world, I don't care what's going on. The wife, the kids, the husband, the whatever, all that, it's me and dog. If you don't have that 15 to 20 minutes a day, just get rid of the dog because you're never going to be able to fulfill the dog's needs. You never will. I don't care how, who, who you think you are, what you are. If you can't spend 10, 15, 20 minutes with your dog, with just you one-on-one -on -one time, with doing something very, very engaging that entire 15, 20 minutes, just get rid of the dog because the dog is gonna run an absolute fool in your household. It's gonna be absolutely wild. Especially if you get one of these herding breeds, you get these guarding breeds. These breeds, have a, they have something to do. 
I don't care how big the dog is. I don't care. You get these pressed canaries, these kind of corsos, these, these Pyrenees. You're getting these dogs thinking, oh, they're just more laid back and they're lazy. They're not. They're, they're, they're used to being up and moving all night long, moving, 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 walking, guarding, protecting, marking, making sure everything is okay. If you're not allowing that dog to be able to do such a thing, to have such a thing, and be able to relieve that instinct inside of it, it's going to go absolutely wild. So wild to the point that what dogs really love doing when they really cannot get their communication out effectively, when they don't think that anybody's listening, the one thing that dogs like doing is they love to bite. They love to just put teeth all on people because that's like their last ditch of like, I need some assistance. So that's where, for me, <coughs> I have a very good understanding of just reading my Bible a whole lot. When that starts to come to the point that your dog starts to put teeth on you, put teeth on someone in your household, that's a, that's a, a blessing to where I'm gonna say, in disguise that you you may not see it that way but that's something where i'm going to say is god is in, intervening in your life saying you got some stuff that you need to work on you got some stuff that you need to do you got some stuff that you need to start focusing more of your time on because you're just abandoning and giving up on something inside of you inside of your household inside of, and around you there's something that you absolutely have to start paying attention to and it's no longer just going to be something that's hidden in the back closet but it's right here right now in your face it's happening it's damaging you it's hurting you it's scaring you it's putting pressure on you that it's, it's right there right now that you can't hide it you can't just just put it off to the side anymore it's there and there's something about that that just makes a, a lot of people get to moving you get moving you get to asking questions you get to putting yourself out there of like i need some help i need some assistance and that's why for me I, I know it's complicated for some people to reach out for help because you're in that dangerous situation where you're actually terrified of your dog inside of your home and i'm telling you the only way that it gets better is if i start doing something about it and if you don't have the information then the information can be brought by money in reality and not so much in trying to watch too many videos of, of what's going on but bringing someone in that's actually able to be able to help you out with what it is that you have going on inside your house that sometimes just watching videos isn't going to get you there i i, I can make a video series all day long but if your dog is already growling it's already snapping it's already biting you know we got to do some completely different stuff going on here and that's not going to come down to how to play with them and how to give them treats and, and how to do any of that it comes down to a whole new relationship fundamental building where we got we got to come in and figure out exactly what's going on here and then every case is very very unique and very very special with that and that's why for me it's a it's super cool. It's super neat, super fascinating because it, it, it's not so much as worrying about no dog training. It's worrying about dog relationship and not only just worrying about a relationship with the dog, but also worrying about a relationship with yourself. That's why for me, I, I, I have a very, very strong message that I like to give people if you're scared of your dog in, inside of your household. And that message not everybody approves of and not everybody likes, but it comes down to the, having a very, very good understanding of the one true God that created this plant, that created me, that created you, that created all this and created everything out here for us to be able to see and be able to do and be able to work with. That, that It's a very, very powerful message to be able to help out people that are struggling right now, that are just in that, I don't know what's going on. And sometimes, I'm telling you, now that's, that's what, why I can say for me that I'm a, I'm a very big believer on a lot that goes on on this planet. And uh, it, 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 God can move in many ways and he, he controls and manages and, and rules and does everything with all these animals. And sometimes the help that you need, you may be putting off to the side, putting off to the side, putting off to the side, but yet now there's this dog that's in your house that's running a fool. And now you have no choice but to have to make a move. That's why for me, something that I can say is, is, is very fascinating about dogs is being able to explain to us who we are as people explain to us where show us where our flaws are show us what we need help with show us where it is that we should focus a little more of our time or energy on because the dogs don't lie that's a cool thing about them children lie you can they deceive they, they do all that but dogs do not they do not know how to they're just so honest they're so real they're just so in the moment and they're going to explain and be able to show you so much about yourself about what it is that you need to start working on because when you're not working on it and you put it to the side, you put it to the, put it to the side, you're going to start to see all the problems are just going to be there and it's just all going to come and it's just going to blow up and be right there in your face. And, and it's an unfortunate circumstance where I can say it with some dogs because, like I said, they love to bite. And something that I would want more and more people to really just start to get a better understanding of is what's the instinct that your dog has that it has to let, it, it has a desire, it has to let it out. Some dogs, it's, it's, it's a simple guarding. And, and create a game so your dog is capable of being able to be on guard protective mode so that it, it can be able to relieve that and feel powerful and feel just just just, just relieve that it, it's able to do what it's supposed to do some dogs it's that chase some dogs it's 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 a chase and and, and I, I, my border collie is cool because he he's not so much of he try to get it and try to hold it and try to kill it. He, he likes to move it when it's not moving he's like okay we're not moving but when it gets moving again it's like okay we're gonna get moving again each dog is so different and 
Just because you have a Border Collie doesn't mean that it's going to like the same game. The Border Collie you have may like playing Frisbee more than doing anything else. It may like just playing tug with you. It may, <clears throat> every single dog is so different. And that's for us to figure out what is that game that's going to be able to fulfill my dog's needs. And again, it's something that is, if you're constantly doing it over and over and over and over and over again, and your dog just isn't getting tired, <clears throat> it isn't letting up, that's not the game for them. That's the game for you. The game for your dog should be, <clears throat> should be able to get your dog really, really tired. In a, in a relatively short period of time, I'm talking 10, 15, 20 minutes, your dog should be able to be very, very satisfied for pretty much an entire day. And if you're doing anything that's, that's not doing that, <coughs> you need to upgrade your level of skill, I would say, with play. Because again, play, it takes, it takes experience to be, be able to be really good with them. And just continuously keep on doing that more and more. It's something that is just absolutely amazing when you're able to, to, to find that game that, that satisfies that dog because that dog is then going to start to give you just an extreme amount of respect. Thank you.